Hi everyone, I'm here today with Peter Hutton and it's going to be a great interview, we're really looking forward to it. Peter Hutton uh, is a trainer and a coach for the real estate industry, right? Yeah, and sales, yeah. And, and in sales, so, and today I've had the great, great pleasure of uh, being in Pete's 4 hour workshop. Anybody that's in training in sales definitely has to check it out and it's called the Motivational Shift. So I'm going to ask Peter a few questions um, and he's going to let it rip and let us know what's going on. <laughs> So thanks Pete, I really appreciate oh. taking the time. I know that you've uh, been speaking all morning, so I really appreciate it. Yeah, so I can talk still. You can talk, yeah. So <laughs> can you uh, tell me a little bit about the motivational shift and kind of, you know, just uh, the basics around it. I know it's a big topic, but... Uh, yeah, it's a big topic, um, yeah. but in a nutshell, you know, I believe and my experience has been such and, uh, and the results I've seen with people is that there are we're all motivated by something, yep. and there is no unmotivated and motivated in truth. We're all motivated, and sometimes that motivation tells us to do nothing, but it's a form of motivation. And the, and the, the thing is, I've discovered that is that there are two forms of motivation, and one takes you towards what you'd really love to create, and the other one takes you off track to um, a, a creating something you don't really want to create. And something that you're trying to avoid. Okay, cool. Um, and and just tell me, you know, just a bit about you and and, and you know where you've come from. I know that you've been in, in real estate uh, previously. So just a maybe a, a, just a quick flash through on, on you know, I suppose a little bit about you and who you are. Sure. Um, well, a uh, uh, long, big question, big story. Um, in in a nutshell, uh, I started uh, in the wool industry as a boy. Uh, in my teens, wow. sweeping floors, and um, I had my first life lesson sweeping floors, and uh, that was very cool. But seven years later, that lesson took me to a point where I was running a $150 million business for Dalgetty, yeah. selling wool all around the world to Russia, China, you know, India, uh, you name it. It was fantastic. And the uh, wool industry crashed in the early 90s. Yep. My wife and I, Karen, we had a, a young baby in Melbourne. And we we're, we're both, our family are in Brisbane, we decided to come home. Yep. And so we came back to Brisbane. There was no real trading in wool from Brisbane, and the industry had crashed literally in a big way. Yep. So I thought, time for a change. I thought it's time for a change. And I was a young bloke, and I thought I was up for it, and I found myself in real estate. Well, there you go. And that was in 94, and so we had 17 years in real estate. Uh, did all the real estate sales like everybody goes through. Yep. Ended up being director of marketing of a development company and a part owner of a real estate arm of, arm of that company. Then I uh, sold out of that business and we created our own real estate agency in 2001. Yep. And I sold that, retired from real estate in 2009, going in 2010, and decided I'd like to do what my life's passion is, and that's mentoring people and coaching people. In, that's amazing. Yes, in this stuff. What a journey that is. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, and if, if, I, if I can ask you, what would a, a, a challenge be? I mean, you, you're in business as a business owner. What, what do you find as a challenge for you? Because I know a lot of people that are watching this, you know, are in business the same. So yeah. one of the things that I share with people is, regardless of the business, whether you're a multi-million dollar business or a startup business, everybody's got a set of challenges. And in, in business, uh, most challenges seem to be almost the same. Some are just magnified more than others. Yeah. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, we, we do all share similar challenges. They just look different, but yeah. they are similar. Uh, look, there's the, I think the biggest challenge for business is, is that once we've created our business, we tend to then go into what's known as the maintenance phase of that business, and we maintain that business, and we try and maintain it. And in that phase, a business tends to lose some energy. It's sort of like over time it can actually look like it's flatlining and in many cases once it starts flatlining it starts going downhill and that can happen in a very short period of time or over a long period of time. So if you've just started a brand new business, that you've just done what I call the creation phase and then you're into the maintenance phase. And the problem with that is the maintenance phase, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you're not you're not actually a good person to maintain your business often. Yeah, exactly. You know? So you've got to recognise that you've either got to bring people in that are good at the maintenance part of your business, or you've got to keep recreating. And I actually like the latter. I like that idea that a business keeps evolving. So every year you set a new vision and you 
recreate yeah. and it, your business evolves and it keeps growing and moving forward and that doesn't mean it gets bigger necessarily but it, it, it's a game of evolution yeah that's interesting because i know a lot of people that are watching this have got the same thing i know i've suffered with that in my business just in the maintenance phase where uh, because i'm a creator and i like doing things sometimes having to do those i suppose daily tasks or daily things becomes seems like it's a long road or in actual fact it's a critical critical point in that business that you need them, right? Yeah, so yeah, for sure. That's really cool. So, um, and, and I suppose for you, I mean, what would your greatest moment be in life, whether it's personal or <laughs> whether it's been in business? What what do you think, uh, you know, maybe one or two greatest moments? Um, for you? Uh, no doubt um, when my children are born. Yeah. I mean, it makes me emotional even thinking about the moment they were born. You know, the moment they came out of the it's womb. It's amazing, right? You know, yeah. like, uh, I remember my first daughter, Lucy, um, she actually came out with the uh, umbilical cord wrapped around her neck and she was blue oh, yeah. in the face and blue and the, the nurses pushed me out of the way and the doctors were raced in and there was a bit of an alarm and I stopped breathing for that <laughs> moment, literally, yeah. and I'm holding my breath because she's holding her breath and um, yeah, it was pretty, oh, no. pretty crazy yeah. day and anyway, she gasped oh, wow. and then I just, I probably have never cried so you know, like wholeheartedly. wholeheartedly in my entire life, just in that moment. Um, so yeah, you know, it's a birth is an amazing thing. I love that. Yeah, I think so. Actually, for for people that are at home, I'm I'm sitting a lot closer to Pete, and I can see his emotion with that, and it's a, uh, um, it's very heart heart warming for me as well. Uh, um, and I I can share that um, with Pete because when my son was born, from when they took him, from when he was born, out of out of my wife. Um, to where they took him onto the table to kind of uh, put this thing that kind of sucks the, the phlegm and whatever mm. out, of the, out of his mouth felt like the longest mm. period of time in my life. And it was less than, you know, 30 or 40 seconds, I think, right? Um, and then just to see the spirit of life come into him was... Uh, it, it's. Uh, it's given me goosebumps. I <laughs> put the back hair up on the back of my head, and I don't yeah, know. Yes, I can see. That. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so can you just uh, two more questions? Number one sure. is, um, where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, like I've got a very clear vision on that. Um, author of several books, a full-time author, really, and in this kind of genre of um, of helping people uh, wake up and master their lives and really create That's what they really love. Cool. And speaking about those books, and so speaking to large groups of people, large numbers, and traveling the world to do it. So a global business uh, around that that of my, my topic. That, that's awesome. I mean, everybody that knows me or people that don't, uh, um, obviously understand that that's my passion as well. I've got an upcoming book coming out called Upology, so I know what it feels like to, to actually write and to speak, because it's kind of what we do. So I'm hoping we're on the circuits together. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Um, and if you had a tip um, for, for the audience, of one business tip and one life tip, what would they be? Uh, okay, uh, my business tip, a uh, very simple one. So I'm just giving a very simple Sim one. Simple. Very simple, easy, anybody can do this. Uh, Firstly, know your KPI. Now, just choose one KPI for something. Let's say, uh, and, and uh, it's turnover of your product. Let's yeah. say your turnover of your product, and let, let's use real estate agents, for example, so I'll keep it simple. Days on market. Let's say an agent has an average days on market and they've tracked it over the last six months, so you have to look at it. You can't guess this, you've got to be accurate. So they've gone, days on market for the last six months for each of the properties that they've sold has averaged 30 days. Let's say that's what they've worked out. Yep. Um, it might be more than that, it could be 60 days, but just using 30 as an example. One very, very simple way to now increase your revenue is to make a game over the next 90 days or 120 days, give yourself a three or four month time frame and have an aim to bring your days on market down from 30 days to 27 only three or four days, it's a very small amount. That, because your turnover increases in a shorter period of time, your revenue goes up, and it has a massive effect for many reasons. Your psychology of optimism improves. Uh, you look, 
your perception of the public see you as selling more stock. Even though it's only a small, a small thing, it has a very big end result. And I've seen this with people where they've done this, they've gone from 40 days down to 35 days, yeah. and that, that actually earn a lot more money. That's a, that's, that's a great tip. Regardless of where, where, whether you're in real estate sales or yeah. you know selling a product widgets. or a service, widgets. Widgets. just stock turnover. Really matter, You've right? got to just turn your stock over yeah. faster. Um, and what I'm getting um, from that, from you know, uh, Pete's message, is that um, the subtle changes make a massive difference Correct. over the over the haul of yeah. value or whatever it might be. And right? the other thing to get from it is yeah. is to know your numbers. No, you know. And, and you know what that's about? It's just being honest with yourself. Yeah. Don't kid yourself. What's your current reality? Be honest, and then have a goal that's that you love to create. That's fun, playful, something that will get you involved. Awesome. And go and do it. And just as a personal tip, one personal tip. Or um, one personal tip is just to do what you love. Just do what you, get, love to you know, just go for what you love. Hey? Yeah, I, I I have to tell you, I like that too. Um, and I'm going to leave uh, one thing with all businesses. Um, as everybody knows, it's really important that. Uh, uh, I not only share in other people's business, but also I love promoting other businesses because uh, someone like Pete sitting here um, is not too dissimilar to the work that I do. And what I love about it is, um, you know, uh, connecting with someone like Pete um, can 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 have a massive, massive um, improvement um, in your life. So I'm going to ask Pete what the offer may be to you know my viewers or anybody that comes across this this um, video. Well. I'm making it up on yeah. the spot because I don't know what the offer is, but I do a workshop called the Motivational Shift. It's a four-hour workshop. Yeah. It is $197. So I did. Uh, I do an early bird of 97 but for your guys, it's yeah. free. Okay, well, so, so as long as they tell awesome. me, they can just contact me and sure. tell me. And so can you give me uh, your, your web address? Yeah, it's themotivationalshift.com.au. So it's T-H-E, motivational, M-O-T-I-V-A. And then they can just find me and contact me from there and then I'll mention your name and I'll, I'll set you up so you can come along for free. I really appreciate it. Well, there you have it. You've got Peter Hutton, the world famous uh, <laughs> presenter and motivational shift. I'll make sure that I'll uh, include a link to his site. So just click on there. You guys can check it out. And uh, it's been great to be with you, uh, Pete. Thanks for everything that you've shared with me thanks, today. Man. And I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Viewers out there, thanks for watching. Thank you. See ya.